Welcome to a very special Saturday Night Live edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I'm your host, Chris Brown, and I'm pleased and honored to have in studio, uh, meeting for the second time in person, the leader of the Green Party of Art. Doing this. This is an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show, and I look forward to discussing the issues that are important to Alberta, but also that are important to the Green Party of Alberta. So, Jordan, thank you for being here. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So, as I'm going to say, as always, if you can just use your inside, the outside voice, and the inside, that'd be greatly appreciated. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, so, Jordan, uh, let's get this out of the way. Uh, you're here in Calgary, attending Calgary Pride tomorrow. Um, what's it, what's it mean for you to be marching in this parade tomorrow through with hundreds of Calgarians and even Albertans, uh, lining the streets tomorrow? Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Um, yeah, I want to acknowledge that I'm on Treaty 7 land, uh, Métis Region 3, and, uh, I was just actually looking at it, the traditional name for Calgary being, uh, Wichispa Oyare, and I probably messed that up, but, uh, I like it. It's a pretty nice name. Um, so tomorrow is Pride. That's why I'm here. Uh, I wasn't going to miss it. Uh, it's really exciting for us, uh, especially with the Greens, because uh, it's nice to get some acknowledgement back that we've been an ally to the LGBTQ plus uh, community. And, uh, you know, when I guess this is a special year because they started allowing political parties back to march and to represent. Uh, but they were very selective, so you had to apply, and they uh, had a sort of a council uh, that went through and looked at the organization and looked at uh, our policies, our track record, our history, uh, our representation within uh, the leadership of our party, and uh, we were deemed a, a true ally of the LGBTQ plus community, and uh, that's an absolute honor. So. Uh, you know, when you get recognized like that, uh, it's time to come out in full force and to really show up. And, you know, that's what allies do. So, of course, I'm here and I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. I've got the, uh, the kid and, and, and my partner is going to be with me. Uh, the deputy leader, Brandy Kincaid, is going to be there and she's bringing her duck. It's true. <laughs> she's got a little wagon with her duck, so she's working on that. Um, but she's amazing, and uh, Evelyn Tanaka, uh, Jonathan Parks, our, our, our VP, and then Evelyn is our, is our president. So everyone's been working really hard, and I'm just really excited to reconnect with the Greens that are in Calgary and, and around this area and, and to march with good people for a good cause. The last time you and I sat down, well, not sat down, but last time you and I met yeah. in person was at the Calgary Public Library. That's you right. were You were the, at the beginning of your uh, leaders tour across Alberta. I know you made stops here in uh, uh, Calgary, and I think you did Cochrane, if I'm not mistaken. I, you, you're, you'll be able to correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah. I, I wanted let's follow up on that tour. What did you yeah. hear from Albertans? Was there any pressing issue that when you spoke to Albertans across this province that they were bringing up to you over and over again? Doesn't matter where I go. Uh, generally, people are dismayed and disenfranchised by the current uh, political landscape here in Alberta. Uh, often they come to us so excited about a lot of the uh, things that they care about, the values that are not being represented in the legislature, and uh, also parties that do not have the political will to speak to um, you know, some of the issues, uh, you know, things like climate change, of course, being a big one that we get a lot. But uh, you know, even just the inequality in our society, the growing inequality, uh, inflation, uh, you know, issues that stem from the poverty in this province that, uh, you know, with a province that is now 13 billion of surplus, uh, the fact that we have poverty at all is, I think, is a crime to, against humanity. Um, there's no other way to look at it because uh, poverty is a, is a policy choice. And I think that we need to, you know, ensure that when we're going out and talking to people, they know that there's uh, a party that holds values that uh, wants to represent them. Uh, the unfortunate part is that we are in a uh, political system with first past the post and the way we elect our officials that it makes it very difficult for 
parties like us that want to be real, want to be authentic, uh, want to represent a, you know, a growing portion of the population in Alberta. Uh, we just don't have the, the, the ability to do that under an undemocratic colonial system like First Past the Post. We can talk more about that later. But let's talk about it now because Absolutely. it seems like it's something you're passionate about. I know yeah. you've made a few posts on social media about proportional representation and how the First Past the Post is undemocratic. Um, why? Why proportional representation? What is the benefit of proportional representation for not only the Green Party of Alberta, but for Alberta as a whole province? Well, when you look at the political system, there's just, uh, I mean, let's, look, let's not even look at the system right now. Let's just look at the reality of the, of the situation. We have a duopoly. We have the NDP and the U, UCP, who are you know, obviously very powerful. Uh, they're fundraising millions and millions of dollars, which, you know, a large portion of that is taxpayer funded, right? Because that comes back to us. And people forget that when you're asking for donations, where do you think that money is that you're getting kicked back for? Um, so I digress. The issue right now is that we have a UCP government that a large portion of the population that did not want. They had 55% of the popular vote with about 67% turnout. That doesn't necessarily mean they should have 100% of the power. Uh, so the system that we have is a basically an elitist colonial system that, you know, no uh, democracy would ever pick on their own. Uh, it's something that's been handed down from elites that allows big tent parties to hold their power and to uh, control the legislature. Uh, so I don't know where to start and where to, where to end on this, but basically there's, when you have, for the NDP majority, they had 40% of the popular vote and you're now got 100% of the um, control. Uh, and then with the UCP, it was 55% of the popular vote. Whereas in proportional representation, 55% of the popular vote would give you 55% of the seats. So I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate with you. Because Please. You know, you know I like doing that on the yeah. show. Um, some would say proportional representation would give a fringe minority view a potential seat in the legislative assembly or the House of Commons, whatever level of government you're looking at. Would the would you be okay with that if uh, say and I and I, I say this lightly but if say the Wild Rose Independence Party got a seat in the legislature would you be okay with that because four percent of the vote uh, the population of Alberta voted for the uh, Wild Rose Independent government would you be okay with that? Well, when you talk about fringe parties, it just doesn't happen under PR. Uh, what you generally have is a threshold that needs to be met. So, for example, it's generally 5%. Uh, so you need to have 5% of the popular vote. So if you're getting 5% of the popular vote, you're actually not a fringe party. And you should be probably at the table to represent a large portion of the population that is disenfranchised with the big tent parties and is going in your direction. What a lot of people talk about is like extremists getting into the legislature and that just generally does not happen. Um, you know, this is the, the most used system in the world and uh, the developing, you know, the developed countries uh, that are similar to Canada, almost all of them use this. You talked about the undemocratic and colonial uh, system that we currently have first past the post under a proportional representation. And I, 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 I followed proportional representation, uh, proportional representation. Yeah. Sorry, everyone. Uh, tongue tied this, uh, tonight. Um, but there is concern that if you have proportional representation, it would lead to minority governments. Mm -hmm. And you would constantly be in an election cycle. And we all know that we don't like elections. We like some stability. Um, is there a benefit of having that minority system under a proportional representation uh, election and a legislature? Yeah. Um, just to unpack what you said, basically, you don't have a minority government. Um, you have a coalition government, which is more appropriate to talk about under a PR uh, system. So when you have a coalition government, you actually have a, a more sustainable government, a more stable government, um, and there's less elections. So 
yeah, I don't know how much you want me to go into this. No, go. Because I can totally geek out. Well, let's geek out. Let's geek out yeah. together, G- okay. uh, Jordan, because I enjoy this type of policy wonk yeah. type of conversation. Yeah. Hopefully our listeners will like it as well, because I think when someone's passionate about a certain subject, whether it be proportional representation, I, I want to know where that comes from, because mm-hmm. um, if... If you were to get elected and put the, a bill in front of the legislature, you would have to get the majority of uh, MLAs to potentially vote for this. Right. Um, they get elected, the NDP or the UCP, under the first past the post system. Right. You're saying, well, no, we need to change that. How do you get the other parties on right. board? Or how do you get this passed because right yeah, now that's people a, are saying that's a good question yeah um and just to finish with the whole coalition government thing um you know when you're in a minority government it does create instability uh, you get a bit more um accountability however you get instability because what happened like let's say in bc uh, start of a uh, the pandemic, uh, people are distracted. They had a snap election and they got power. So that wasn't for the betterment of the people. That was because they were trying to take seize power, which is what the liberals had just done as well during that election. They weren't happy with a minority. Um, so yeah, with a with the PR system, you get the accountability and you get the stability, which is helpful, especially in a place like Alberta where people. Uh, where you have a flip-flopping, um, you know, oppositional two-party system, which is very diversive, uh, which creates a lot of um, hate and, and, and it creates a lot of angst uh, amongst the voters and a lot of disenfranchisement. But um, how do you change it, though? Yeah, okay. At the end of the day, how do you change yeah. it? Because I, I, you can say to your blue that we should change it. We saw mm-hmm. Justin Trudeau pledge it in 2015. This is mm-hmm. going to be the first last election to first pass the post. And then yeah, his terrible. way of uh, choosing of how elections didn't wasn't the approved under the committee. So he said, well, we're not going to do it anymore. We're going to continue with first past the post. Yeah, well, so how do you change it? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, again, there's a lot I could talk about there. Um, and we can get back to Justin. And, <laughs> and we will get and back to Justin. <laughs> um, but what we can talk about is how do we put this through? So the idea that I'm putting out to Albertans is that we, at the, at the Green Party of Alberta, we have six core principles. One of them being participatory democracy. Now, the other principles, interestingly enough, things like nonviolence, um, you know, social justice, and respect for diversity, these all come out of a proportional system. You have less, and I'll, tell, I'll, I'll get back to, to, to how we're going to do this, but you have less inequality. Um, you've got actually a stronger economy, generally 1% uh, on average, better than uh, governments that use first past the post. Uh, you have less deficit, 39%, basically. Uh, you have stronger environmental protection. You have uh, usually a stronger public system for education and healthcare. So you're winning, and, and all of our values win when we move to a stronger democracy, and that's for the people, not for the elitists. Now, how do we do that is we basically run in this next election. We're already a protest vote. So why don't we protest the system? Why don't we protest the, the, the strategy a strategy against this, the, the systemic issue uh, of why the people's voices are not being represented in the legislature. And so if we had made a promise that we would run you know, mostly on uh, proportional representation, it works uh, like using the game to change the system. Um, and I think that that's the invitation to Albertans to get involved if they feel like it's time for a stronger democracy and a way out of the mess. You can be stuck with the duopoly for, you know, I don't know how long. Um, but in this next election, we have the ability to change this. So if a protest vote becomes, picks up movement, it becomes a revolution. So, so I just, it has need, to start I just want somewhere. to clarify something here for a second because you said the Green Party is already a protest vote. Absolutely. Under this system, it really is. Really? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's like we, we can be honest because we're not, we're not, we don't have a large uh, percentage of the popular vote at all. Uh, there's a lot of people that hold our values, but they gender, generally vote um, for other parties uh, mostly to block what they want the least. This is the crux of the first past the post system. So when you're not voting for what you want, you're voting for what you want less. Um, 
and you're blocking people. So all I can hear is the block the conservatives uh, and we can get to Daniel Smith and what's coming for us. Uh, but really this, this system is, is, is not set up for uh, smaller parties to, to you know, come out of, of, of the light and, and people to vote, uh, stri not strategically, but fo vote for what they believe in. So we're generally used as like a protest vote, because if not, you're voting NDP or UCP, you're blocking the person you want the least, right? And that's the crux of the problem. And I've always said on this show, you should always vote for what you believe in and not vote for what someone tells you to vote for. That would be lovely. I, yeah. it, it would be lovely. It would be lovely in a perfect kumbaya world <laughs> yeah, exactly. where everyone got along and everyone voted for their true values and their morals and who they be want to best represent them. Instead of, like you said, voting for someone, voting for something to stop someone else. But I could go that's into it. for like a four hour conversation on just that. In that's itself. it. And that's the basics. And I think that everyone in their heart knows that. Right. Um, there's something that I that I've been saying a lot lately is that, you know, you're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. This is definitely a solution. So be part of that solution. The other thing I'm saying is you're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution, but no one's the full problem and no one is the full solution and that is a lie and what those two parties are doing right now is saying that we're the solution and that they're the problem and you're never going to get anywhere i and i will say this for a little bit of a piggyback onto what you just said there it's also the people in the media who need to start doing that because in our in my field of work i know that there are people who won't talk to certain parties because well they're they're not in the legislature so they don't right. mean anything right yeah. but people vote people vote for the green party and we need to address this because if you don't you're telling the people who vote for certain parties who don't vote for the main parties that you mean nothing. You're nothing to us. So uh, that's why I'm hoping that this small show can start a conversation and actually get the word out for you. Yeah, it's really tough, right? Because, and that's the thing. If we come out and say, look, we're here for PR, we're going to legislate PR. Uh, some things that I've said in the past, which people have really perked up about is, and I think I actually said that to you, it was one of the first times I said it was, you know, why don't we uh, bring in PR, legislate it, and then run another election. And then everyone can talk about their values straight up. Yeah. And people can vote for their values because now it's not about blocking other people. And that's not this hypothetical world of make-believe. That is what's happening in most... Out there no, <laughs> something just stopped there for a quick second. I do apologize. I thought we got hacked. No, I hope not. Um, I want to I want to turn to uh, because we could probably talk about proportional representation for a good hour, two hours, three hours, and we will because a lot of these issues will come back around to it. But I'll I'll try not to geek no, out too. No, no, we will geek out. But I want to yeah. I want to make sure we touch on a few of the issues that you brought up already, and that was please inflation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you said that Albertans are talking about this. I know from the conversations I'm having with people across this province that inflation is hitting their wall, their pocketbooks. The cost of living is going up. Uh, people are struggling right now. I, we hear reports of food banks being emptied because people can't afford groceries right now. Um, you talked about the surplus, the $13.2 billion surplus that mm -hmm. was just recently announced earlier this week I, I use air quotes as announced because it wasn't really announced it was more hey we're going to put it towards savings you're saying we should use it we should use it to help address some of these issues particularly poverty um if the green party was elected right now what would they be doing with that surplus right um the 30.2 i think that that's really not as much as we should have as well i don't know where that money's gone and that's a larger conversation uh, so it's mismanagement and what's going to happen right now with that money is they're going to try and use that to buy their base back right for this next election again going back to first past the post this is the games that people play under these systems because uh, it's not about uh, what's best for the people it's about how to keep power and you saw that with the ndp coming in very very high on the virtue signaling and uh, once they got in of course uh, no proportional representation and uh, they they ripped up a uh, very timely leap manifesto, which would have really done wonders for uh, our chance w with climate change and the environment. 
uh, and then they lost power. And then you had the other kid in the sandbox come over and start kicking down all their sand castles. Uh, so this is the game that they play with this money. Uh, what we need to do with the money, uh, first of all, we would instill a universal basic income and we would do that immediately because we know that every trial that's ever been done shows that uh, it costs less to do that. It costs less to get people out of poverty than to keep them in poverty. Uh, we need a housing first program similar to Finland, uh, which would get every homeless person off the street because again, we know that it costs more money to keep them on the street. So why are we uh, allowing our politicians to tell us that these issues are complicated? when all these prices are skyrocketing. And uh, also I just read uh, great articles about why universal basic income doesn't actually raise inflation, because I'm sure that's something that viewers might be thinking. Uh, it actually- It was about to be my devil's yeah, advocate yeah, yeah. conversation that yeah. I was about to pose to you. Um, Moving around money doesn't uh, create inflation, just making money. Uh, so w when you instill a universal basic income and when you legislate it, you would be moving money around uh, to the people that need it the most. And by doing that, you alleviate a ton of costs like uh, health issues, crime, uh, the, the uh, inability to even collect taxes from uh, this group. So the lost opportunity costs of these people being in society, not to mention just the well-being of communities and the, our ability to uh, withstand these, these ongoing issues that are hurting Albertans right here and right now. So again, there's nothing hypothetical about uh, the success of a universal basic income. And uh, for the Greens, that's, that's just uh, common sense for us. Some might say that by having a universal basic income, and yet again, playing devil's advocate here, for those who are watching this right now, please don't come after me. This is what I've heard on the Twitter sphere, which we all know Twitter is completely real. And everything that is said on Twitter is the exact word of whatever power you believe in. But I want to talk about the, I want, I want to challenge you a little bit here. Sure. Um, they will say universal basic income is basically guaranteeing someone that's going to sit on their butt and not oh, work. The lazy. <laughs> the lazy. The, the lazy, lazy poor. Yes, the lazy comp, the yeah. lazy uh, challenge to this. I believe that was Nixon era yeah. uh, messaging. So yeah. how, wh what do you say to that? Because I, I've heard it. And is it is it just giving money to people who are quote unquote lazy and poor and don't really want to do anything else but just collect money off of uh, the g big government? It's actually a work incentive because it gets people off of uh, things like EI and other benefits that uh, keeps them from not working, right? Because again, they don't want to go back to work because then they'll lose this and then how will they pay? And then, then there's chance there and there's no safety net. So this gives the people, uh, the, first of all, it takes away uh, you know, other things that, that they'd be getting and, and it gives them something that they can depend on uh, and budget for whether they have a job or not. And so it allows people a safety net. They can get retraining. They can work jobs that they appreciate. They can work, uh, they can go retrain, especially like new Canadians that come across. They don't have equivalencies in like, let's say healthcare, which we could really use right now. Uh, it allows them the safety net to go back, get those equivalencies and then join the workforce properly instead of just bouncing around. Uh, again, I could go on and on and on about this. Which I would love to, but we have a lot of talk. We yeah. have a lot of conversations and- UBI for the win, for sure. You, so you would, is that one of the platform policies that you're going to be running on in the next election? Absolutely. I, now, i got to be careful about this because uh, our strategy is, is adapt and overcome right now. So right now, I'm, I'm, I'm really focused on participatory democracy. I'm really focused on uh, a proportional representation, electoral reform, so that we can all work together to ensure that poverty is eradicated, that these issues take hold. Right, so that's first and foremost for me. But of course, mainstreaming things like UBI, Housing First, uh, is pivotal to our, our platform and all our messaging. Now, I should mention before we continue on here that um, if you have a question that you want to ask Jordan, please write it down via the website or YouTube. We take uh, Jordan's a, is graciously accepted the offer to answer some of your questions. We already have a few that start come in. We're going to oh, talk good. about them a little bit later. But um, I want to turn to uh, the big. I guess it's the big Alberta story that a lot of people are talking about right now, and that is <laughs> Sovereignty Act. 
Daniel mm-hmm. Smith is one of the candidates for the United Conservative leadership, replacing Jason Kenney, mm-hmm. who is going to be leaving here, potent- well, in October, not potentially. He will be leaving in October. <laughs> he might find a way again. Um, of this province. Uh, she has pledged a sovereignty act to challenge any uh, issues or any bills or any laws that the federal government passes that they she doesn't like or Alberta is not in the best interest of Alberta. What's your position and what's the Green Party of Alberta's position on the Sovereignty Act? And Because no one's seen it. It is not written yet as of recording. Mm-hmm. She said that she's going to release it next week sometime. When yeah. next week? But we're not sure. Um, do you Are you in favor of challenging the federal government in this type of way? Or is there a better way to work with Ottawa? So Sovereignty Act, what's your position? And then okay. how do you work with Ottawa? Yeah, um, just going back again, you... You really think she's going to win, do you, Chris? I, I don't I don't know, and I'll mm. be honest. Uh, I've talked to conservative uh, supporters from across this province, and I hear very diehard Smith supporters. I hear right. very, I'm not voting for them, and if, if she wins, I'm leaving the party. So it's a right. very mm-hmm. split vote. Now, does she grow after the first ballot? I don't know. So unless she right. wins on first ballot, which we've seen conservatives don't have a tendency to do that in past leadership races... Besides Jason Kenney, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm i watching. Do I think? Is there a chance? Yes. But am, mm-hmm. am I 100% certain? No. Right. This is the next four years that we could be looking at. Mm-hmm. Uh, a politician that makes Jason Kenney look like a very reasonable person. And so this is the this is the world that that Alberta is moving into it is hateful and it's divisional and it's and it's, and it's ludicrous uh, the sovereignty act is just double speak it's how do you because all they're doing is working their base they just want their base votes again first past the post at its worst in effect <laughs> uh, so here we go how do we have um, a separatist party without separating you create this make-believe thing called the Sovereignty Act. It doesn't matter if it's constitutional or not because all they want to do is control the narrative. And once you control the narrative, everyone's talking about you, about your thing, your name comes out first, and you generally win. That's the populist uh, electoral strategy that's been working since Trump. And it's happening right now. Here we are in our province. And so we are, you know, listening to double speak that doesn't make any sense and it doesn't have to because she's just peddling her base and it's I think it's just a way for her to say that she's going to separate without separating and, and try to have you know win on both sides of the voting because it's all just about her getting elected what's my take on it again it's ludicrous and I think that do you um, think do, so there is I think there's been poll after poll of a rise of anti-Ottawa Yes. Discuss whether it be Alberta not getting a fair deal, uh, whether it be uh, Trudeau's overstepping his bounds on uh, yeah. provincial issues. Um, what's your opinion? Do you think? Do you think I there think is if, a under? Do you think there's a reasonable? Uh, there's a reasonable position for Albertans to be upset about what's been going on with Ottawa and Alberta's relationship. Yeah, I think none of this would have happened if Justin Trudeau, that jackass, would have just done what he said and. Uh, made sure that he had proportional representation then they would have had a coalition government which would have represented more canadians including albertans and then you would have had a federal government that was working with provincial governments so right there and then it's all connected very frustrating for clarification boy that was george saying that that was not me so uh we, oh yeah we would love the prime jackass. minister to come on the show but yeah come come on out justin <laughs> come to alberta you're gonna get yelled at though yeah i talk about that um we will we will in a few seconds but i want to stick on to this um are you in favor of renegotiating our deal with the whether it be the transfer payments that Ottawa collects from Alberta, whether it be provincial health care, whether it be uh, RCMP uh, uh, budget that uh, the province gives to Alberta, are you in favor of sitting down with the federal government and renegotiating some of the big items that are currently facing Albertans? Of course. We always need to be renegotiating. We always need to be representing uh, the people of Alberta, and that means being at the table. Now, who's at the table? That's what I keep talking about. Yeah. 
And you you see that table as a diverse table. Mm-hmm. As a party that is Right, gov- what I'd like to see. Yes, you would Absolutely. like to see it. You'd like to see a table that's diverse that is not just made up of Marine or NDP or Liberal and PCs, 100%. but you want to see a diverse table made up of everyone. Absolutely. Uh, look can at- you work with all the parties? Like, can well, you, you go should. have it's a conversation job. with Rachel Notley tomorrow and have a conversation and sit down and have coffee with her? Or uh, would you be able to do that with Danielle Smith? I know you've just said J- Justin Trudeau's. Uh, yeah, explicit. But. Well, I think that we should be honest. We don't have to like these people. I don't like Rachel Notley because she, again, said she was going to do things that she didn't do. And the way she treated her uh, time in power uh, disenfranchised me from politics altogether, so much so that I actually just stood up and looked at the value systems and became the leader of the Green Party of Alberta. It's because of uh, the decisions that were made during the Notley era where I thought had so much hope and I saw that disintegrate into the greed of power in the system. And, um, but doesn't mean I wouldn't speak. That's what our job is as politicians, is to represent people and to work together. And then I think that people are missing that point. There should be a large amount of, co- of collaboration because all you have right now is um, a government that's in, in power and a government that's in opposition. And so, yay, you get this fancy title named leader of the official opposition, and you complain for four years, and you ridicule someone for four years, and then that person says they're going to step down, then you, then you thank them. And it's just all fake. It's just none of it mean, means anything. And I hope that, um, you know, I know that there's good people in every party. There's good supporters in every party, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that the game sucks and that we need to change it by playing the game. And that's why... We can vote in this next election. You can vote in Greens, and we will promise uh, a legis- th- that we would legislate proportional representation, and then we would have another election. Things like that. I want to see a, uh, a, a radical shift of the systemic issues in our society. But absolutely, we need to work with one another. I mean, look at the... Um, there's proportional representation in Ireland. And so you have a, a, a sort of more right party. I can't pronounce their names. Uh, it's Gaelic, it's a uh, more right party. Then you have a centrist party, then you have the Greens. And they, under proportional representation, like, imagine this. They get together in a room. They come to agreements about what's important for the people that they represent. They put out a 50,000-word document of what they're going to do over the next five years and how they're going to work together and collaborate together. They go to the point of saying, okay, uh, you're prime minister for 2.5 years and you're prime minister for the next 2.5 years. Let's get this done. They all shake hands and they get to work. They get to work for the people that voted them in under a representative structure. That's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm saying is an option. I'm just trying to give an option. And so I think I've grown up a lot in the since I've talked to you last because I was still saying all right, here we are. Here's a young party that you know, wants to represent people. We want to represent those that are not um, represented currently in the system, uh, especially you know, indigenous, uh, people that care about land, land stewards like farmers and the agricultural system here needs a like, stronger voice. And no one's going to come to the table with, uh, with us because it's all about blocking the other party. And so until we can put something on the table which deals with the uh, inability to, to have uh, collaboration and coalition governments, then what's the point? So I'd like to just kind of go for the win here. So how do you go for the win? I'm going to, let's, let's. We need let's candidates. Do, so, but, but here's the yeah. thing. Uh, I'm going to, we're, we're going to have a we conversation. Need to plant the we're we're going to have the conversation yeah. right now. I feel like it's one that we've been skirting around here for a few seconds, but let's, yeah. let's do this. How do you do it? Because <laughs> yeah. you have to get elected. You have and to get elected. If you, you run a full slate of candidates, yeah. if you play the game, you run a full slate of candidates, That's you are, right. you're going to have resources in 87 ridings right. across this province. Right. You need, you need the match. You need the though. money. You, well, you need the money, but you need <laughs> Which to we match. don't have. You need one seat first. Yes. Because one can turn into two, can turn yes. into four, can turn yes. into eight. That's the traditional way of doing this. So you're planning a full out blitz. I, I can't do it without the people of Alberta, right? So I need to have people that will stand up and say, okay, I don't agree with everything under the Green Party. However, I, do, I would represent the six principles, which are basic 
good people principles, right? Like respect for diversity and nonviolence. You know, these are important. Like this is our core. Yeah. If you can represent that, and then you can, you want to um, bring proportional representation to Alberta, then you can run for us. And so, what I'm saying is, we need 87 people to come together and run on this, and then we can. Uh, are people legislate it. Well, yeah. I've just started talking about it. No, but are in pe- that sense because um, while I don't, people are interested. I, well, I don't want to speak at a turn. Yeah, um, you have a year, less than a year. Yeah, you have seven months to do this, and you need. To- and we have nothing to lose because <laughs> yeah, we have nothing to lose. Other parties have a lot to lose. They've got mil- they got millions of dollars into their marketing schemes and. They've got, they've, you know, this is the, the chance to, to go behind a, a banner of, of one of the green principles. Uh, and this does a few things for us. It gets us out of the duopoly. And also for the Greens, it shows that something that, you know, generally people don't uh, acknowledge with us is that we're not a one party or one, one position, one issue party, uh, which is usually the environment. Right. So we care about other things more, you know, not just the environment, uh, social justice and and, you know, uh, a stronger democracy being some of the the, the big issues that, that we care about. So, again, this is important for the Greens just to come out there and say, look, this is how much we care about uh, fixing our democracy and having a stronger democracy for the will of the people. And I think that people that, you know, all the hyper partisan bullshit can just, you know, take a walk and people can just get behind this regardless of what their identity politics are in the past you know and this is something that I tried to do this is the very first thing I tried to do as a leader you might find this interesting uh, I can't remember why, why we got in contact uh, but it was it was literally for this reason I, I was speaking with David Swan the former leader of the Liberal Party the Alberta Liberals and he had just been asked, uh, David Conn just stepped down. He'd just been asked to be in term. He said, no, I won't do it because we need to think bigger, basically. Um, be realistic, which is kind of where I'm at right now in politics, is let's be realistic. What can we do? What, what can we not do? And, and I do think that this is realistic for us. He said, let's form a progressive uh, coalition. Uh, let's get the Alberta party involved. Let's get the Liberals. Let's get the Greens. See who else wants to come to the table. Uh, we need third party representation. And uh, it was great. We, we went out and, and uh, Ken Chapman got involved and, and the Alberta party came out to talk to us. And unfortunately, the uh, Liberal party just, again, failed to come out, just disintegrating. Uh, but... They're holding on to the name. I don't know why, um, but they won't. They didn't come out, and we had a great talk with the Alberta party. Um, you know, the it was. It, it's nice to see another party that wants to work uh, in, in a collaborative uh, effort for the people of Alberta, which is important. Um, but again, there was a lot of ego. Oh no, we're running a full slate. We're fine without you, and the, the things kind of just disintegrated from there. Which is weird. But it's because unfortunate. In if I'm not mistaken, in 2015, the Greens, the Liberals, and the uh, Alberta Party all got together and they ran one candidate and one riding. Right, yeah. Miss Lori Blakeman mm-hmm. ran as a Liberal, mm-hmm. but she was carrying the Alberta Party banner and the Green Party banner. Could you see a potential c- scenario where you would like yeah. to see the parties work collaboratively and say, you run your candidates in these locations, we'll run in these candidates, we promise not to overlap and say... Hey, if you want to believe in proportional representation, the parties all agree with it. Let's work together. Let's not try to take each other's votes from each other. And let's actually have a real election where people will have the chance to vote for proportional representation. Yeah, sure. Uh, and, and that was even before I came up with you know the, the, need, the, the diehard need for proportional representation because I was still trying to work within the system. I was still trying to see, okay, who wants to come to the table? Who wants to collaborate for the, for the betterment of, of Alberta? Imagine what this could look like, right? Because I'm not from politics. I'll remind any viewer that doesn't know me. I'm a firefighter. Um, I'm a disaster manager. I work at the Red Cross. I mean, I'm a humanitarian, right? A fellow Fire firefighter. Unite. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there you go. I didn't actually realize that after the first conversation, yep. but yeah. So we, uh, you know, I'm coming from the sidelines here, and I'm looking past the curtain, and I'm going, this is brutal how do we change this and i think that that's what we need more in politics uh i've got some really amazing very uh, 
very, very uh, smart political advisors. And they kind of steer me towards the tradition, you know, the traditional partisan uh, bullshit, unfortunately. And it, it, it again, it, I think it takes the fire away from me. Um, I think what I need to do is constantly be that person that's just looking from the outside saying, I'm not, you know, I didn't want to do this. I'm stepping up for the right reasons. I'm stepping up for the future of my child. I'm stepping up because I care about the people. I spent my whole life caring about people I don't know and helping them and thinking about them. And, uh, you know, this is, the, this is the big disaster management move because what we can do is, let's do, use some more firefighting analogies. <laughs> we can it. spray water on the smoke all day long, but until you come in and hit the seat of the fire, you're not going to put that fire out. Yeah. And the other option is you just let that whole house burn until it disintegrates. So what's happening right now in Alberta is that house is on fire and we can spray water at the smoke and say, we're going to do this and we're going to do that and elect the Greens and elect the whoever. But right now we, we have to get to the seat of the fire. We have to put water on that fire. And that is electoral reform. That is the golden ticket for all of Alberta to get ourselves out of this mess because it's just... The house is on fire and that's what's going to happen. And we're going to get more divisive. It's going to be more division. Uh, there's going to be more hate. There's going to be more anger. There's going to be more people knocking down sand castles in their sandbox. Uh, but the NDP also don't even have a chance. In my opinion, we're, you know, we're going to go through this all over again. Why are we doing this? Why are we going to, why, why doesn't the people stand up and say, first past the post, it's not working for us. We're now stuck with the more extreme version of the UCP, quite potentially. Um, and then you have, again, uh, Rachel Notley and the NDP complaining for another four years. Are that, you afraid? Yeah, it, it sucks. seems like you're afraid. It seems like you're I, worried about the future of this province. Imagine, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it wasn't yeah. trying to be a glib But comment. you know what? It's just... Also, politics is very, it's, it's about the position for a lot of people, whereas I don't see it that way. And, I, and I'm not okay with pos positions. And if I get a seat, then it means that we'll have three seats and, and we'll be stronger. And, you know, I just want to see, I want to see my child grow up in, in an Alberta that, you know, is, is, is not hateful, that doesn't, uh, completely destroy their environment and use it as a, as a as a resource, and is not working together, and is not thinking about the the most impoverished people of our province, is not protecting people. You, you want to talk about ambulances? We can talk about ambulances. This is insane, right? So, so let's that, let's yeah. jump into that oh then. Let's God. let's go into that sandbox and that. Let's try to build that sandcastle up. In, to use your yeah. analogy here, Jordan. I'm worried. Well, what if you get hurt? Yeah. What if you get sick? Um, we don't have a strong public health care system at all anymore. Uh, that is really scary. And I think everyone should be scared. But also, uh, I'm so sick of the politicians using fear uh, and fear alone to uh, fundraise and to gain power. And that's what Daniel Smith's doing through all of her messaging is using that fear game. Um, but yeah, it's, it's scary. Like, we're working... Now on the on the fire trucks, this is the first time I've ever heard of us needing to uh, transport people. It was Calgary Fire was transporting people because the ambulances weren't coming, and of course we want to help people. But I don't want to say that's not our job because we'll do whatever it takes to help people as firefighters. Uh, but it messes up the system, and we need to be going up. Wouldn't necessarily be transporting people. Um, and what I'm saying is the, the system is broken. The system is absolutely broken. It's getting worse and worse and worse. And you can already see what the conservatives are doing in Ontario and what Daniel Smith, I, you know, I don't even have to listen to know what she wants to do with our health care system. It's, it's no joke. Um, this is a really, really scary time, I think, for all of our public services. And the Greens are very strong on, on we want to see strong education, strong health care systems, social services, emergency services. We're on the doorstep of climate change. It's not really on the doorstep. It's all around us. Look at the smoke outside. It's, it's just wild. It's just wild. Um, I want to turn to some questions that we got in because yeah. we're almost at the hour okay. mark here. And I, uh, I, I want to start with one that... Uh, came in about like 10 minutes into the interview already. Okay. And that is the position of the Green Party of Alberta on nuclear, small nuclear, uh -huh, yeah, nuclear reactor or reactors. 
Uh, do you have? Does the Green Party believe in nuclear power? What is the position of the Green Party on nuclear uh, small nuclear modules? That's the word. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Garrett is the gentleman's name. Oh, really? Okay. Yo, oh, Garrett. Yeah, I think I know this. Garrett. He's friends with our friend Rigel, who's very pro nuclear. Uh, we have some very pro-nuclear people in the Green Party as, as members. Uh, our official policy is that we are not pro-nuclear. Um, and, of course, that comes back to the issues regarding the, the fact that we have nowhere to put that waste. And uh, I think that there's other opportunities and investments that we could be making instead of, let's say, propping up our fossil fuel industry with these nuclear trailers. Um, you know, it's, it's just not going to actually solve the systemic issues. But I like to see how, how technology moves and I've heard of uh, different technologies that could work and of course we're always open to it. Um, it's just you have to show us how, like I said in the, in the last interview, I spent a long time saying, till you can show me how we're going to clean up, we need to stop, Yeah. right? And by stop, I mean stop expanding. Doesn't mean shut down everything. Shut down everything tomorrow. It means we can't keep expanding, um, you know, these industries, especially the fossil fuel industry, uh, coal. Uh, right now, no one knows how to clean up. No one knows who's liable. Where's the money coming from? It's generally going to come from us. And now we have a 13 billion surplus. This would probably be a good time to start cleaning up instead of expanding. So that's generally my balance stance on no, on energy. I, I, I thank you for that. Yeah. Um, the next one comes from Stacy, and it's about carbon pricing. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're going far enough on the current carbon price that the federal government has put in? I'm assuming that's what you meant. It just says, "Do you think you're going far enough on carbon like, prices? Do we need to raise? Do, do we need to raise prices? it? Do we need to lower it? What do, what's your, what's the Green Party's position on carbon pricing? And yeah, is it going far enough right now with? Uh, everyone saying and yet again Stacey if I'm saying this correctly please write in and please tell me I'm saying this incorrectly but is it going far enough or do we need to do more to fight climate change yeah we need to do more to fight climate change uh, that's an easy answer but as far as carbon pricing um, yeah I mean you Albertans get back more than they get taken from from carbon pricing here so Carbon tax, you actually get more. Unless you've got like two or three houses and multiple cars, yeah, you're going to pay more for, for your carbon tax. Uh, it's generally a polluter pays system. So I would like to see generally, yeah, industry uh, that, are, that are polluting, uh, I'd like to see higher rates for them. Uh, it should be a polluter pays system. I don't think uh, it should fall on taxpayers and everyday working class people. Uh, and it doesn't, uh, as you know, when you got your, your, your rebate this year. The, right? Yeah. You I didn't, didn't get, get one. It? You didn't get one? Okay, nope. what are you doing? I don't know. I would, I would uh, complain. I would get one every year. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, you, I would go back. I, I owe the government a crap load of money every year, but I never have to. I never get I any know money. I know this feeling. I've been there before. <laughs> it um, is so fun to yes. write checks to the government. Right. Again. Imagine you're getting a UBI and you were uh, not not uh, going from dime to dime right? yeah um, we have to uh, something that my a uh, friend of mine always says is we have to that we're talking about the end of the month uh, and that's the Jeep jet and he's uh, very very right on that comment um, which will be on the show later on the, yes ah, you're gonna you're in for a show I'm looking forward to yeah it. <laughs> it's gonna be good uh, I am too um, but to get to the point are we doing enough? Uh, no, uh, we need to be taxing uh, in a polluter pays situation more. Uh, and we also need to ensure that uh, generally the corporate tax rate is up. It's 8% uh, if I'm not mistaken here, uh, which is just insanely low. Uh, so the amount of subsidies that are going to these industries that pollute. Um, also, it's more me than then my representation of the Green Party is that we need to look at environmental protection as a whole and uh, our focus on, uh, on just carbon, for example, is a, it can be a distraction and uh, without clean drinking water and clean food and food security and, and our ability to breathe clean air, uh, it doesn't matter how much greenhouse gases 
Not a question from the com the question uh, from the comments, but I have a follow up question on that. Um, you have pledged to run in Banff, Kananaskis. In Banff, Kananaskis. Well, you are looking at we're, running. We're looking at it. We've talked about it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, so one of the big things that's been uh, addressed in that uh, riding right now is mining on the slopes of the Rocky Mountains mm -hmm. um, for coal. And there's a lot of municipalities who are very much against that. Right. Um, what's the Green Party's position? I, I kind of feel like <laughs> this is a, a softball yeah. for you, Jordan, yeah. but I got to go put it on the record because I didn't talk about it last time that we had you on the show, but I want to get it on this time. Oh, yeah, we're, of course, against mining coal. Um, we're, we would shut down coal. That's one of those things that you can shut down. Uh, would you shut down tomorrow, though? Or would you be able to transition the workers? Because the when you say you're going to shut it down, a lot of workers who are in the coal field. And again, metallurgic. I, we're talking about metallurgical coal, yeah. right? So this is this is a something that we export uh, for steel. Uh, so yeah, we would shut it down. It's our policy to to shut it down. Coal is is just a no brainer. Uh, I think that we can move the conversation beyond that. And the fact that that's even a discussion is just shows where we're at. And, you know, uh, during the uh, power, of the, when the NDP were in power, they were all for metallurgical mining, which, uh, you know, again, is just another reason why them just going on trends is not enough. You need a party like the Greens that are strong on these aspects that, you know, we, we've been talking about uh, banning coal mining for for decades. And, you know, we've been talking about UBI for decades. You know, we've been talking about a lot of these issues, uh, proportional representation for decades. Like, none of this is new to us, right? So... Uh, it's more uh, just the fact that I think when you're looking to vote, maybe go to the table and say, hey, what, are these parties just virtue signaling? Is this something that's just trending for them because they think they're going to pick up votes? Or is this what they really believe in? And, and go back and take a look. Question from Gord. Hi, Gord. This question is a... I feel like I'm going to get attacked here if I ask, answer, ask this question incorrectly, so please bear with me. Okay. It, it's not a personal question. Attack from me or from Gordon? No, from just people from in people. the oil industry. Okay. Will you be visiting mm. Fort McMurray and be saying the exact same thing you're saying now? Oh, yeah. I think that we need to do the exact same. Like, why would, why would my messaging change? Because I'm going to so, some politicians yeah. will change their message if they're okay. in Edmonton or Calgary or Fort McMurray well, because you know, whether because the it, it, I think it's more and Gord if this is incorrect please comment again I'm not sure if you're still with us this was asked of about 20 minutes ago yeah but um, I think there's a big conception right. that right. Green Party of Alberta you are going to go into Fort McMurray and you're going to shut it down Fort McMurray is run on the oil industry right the energy yeah. industry um, so there might be concern that if you go up to Fort McMurray you may not be saying we need to sh transition we need to look at well, raising I, corporate yeah. taxes where oh yeah no we absolutely need to raise corporate taxes the, the I mean the oil and gas companies are making insane amounts of profits right so i'm i'm a big fan of windfall taxes and that's again that's a bigger discussion uh but there's definitely ways that we need to bring some of this money back from the people because these resources uh you know really they're the they are the people of alberta's at the end of the day so what, what you're I, saying here today is what you're going to be saying oh in yeah that doesn't happen and that's why that's why proportional representation is so important is because you don't have to agree with everything I'm saying. Um, and I don't have to agree with everything that other people are saying because your interests are valid, Gord. Your interest is valued, valid. So if, you know, if I don't represent you, then you wouldn't be voting for, for me. But there's other people that w absolutely I would represent and the Green Party of Alberta has represented. So uh, when you have a proportional representational system, you get all those voices that come to the table and they work things out in coalitions which is what most countries do in the world we are at the hour mark damn i know it feels like it was only 10 minutes ago we started but it's we're at true the hour yeah mark. um for anyone who asks questions via the website we're going to download all the questions we're going to send them off to jordan probably either today later on tonight or tomorrow morning latest right. so right. hopefully jordan will be able to reach I'll be out. partying at the, pra uh, at the pride parade tomorrow so you'll get a little delayed response Ooh, exactly but we'll send them we'll, we'll send it tuesday morning after the long weekend yeah. we'll let jordan get back up to edmonton and, and if anyone wants to march with us come on out 
and uh, you don't have to be a, a Green Party member. You know, again, we're just showing up as, as allies and, and, and celebrating this important event. But for those who are going to be listening to this later on, Jordan, how can people get involved? Sure. How well, can people learn a little bit more about you? How can yeah. they potentially consider being a candidate if they are believing in proportional representation? Right. It, and it doesn't have to be just proportional representation. If, if the other values speak to you, please reach out to me. Uh, the best way to cut through the noise, you can go directly to me, leader at greenpartyofalberta.ca. Also, albertagreens.ca, that's our website. So all our information is on there, uh, including some of the, the pillars that will be in our platform uh, beyond proportional representation. Um, it just depends on how we move and what the people of Alberta want from us and how we can represent them best. And again, this is what it's coming down to, is how can I represent you best? We need candidates uh, to run because we want to have a full slate. Uh, again, so leader at greenpartyofalberta.ca, that would be the uh, easiest way to reach me and I can ensure that you don't get lost in the noise. Jordan, I want to thank you so much for sitting down and doing this. I, I, I know you are a busy man and you came in to Calgary and you your first stop was here. Well, uh, drop off your... Yeah. Uh, drop off my little guy. Little yeah. guy, but you your first stop after yep, doing that it. it's important it is what you're I, doing is important Chris. and i appreciate you sitting down and talking with us and um like i said i will send you all those questions that mm. people have submitted into us and mm. um i appreciate everything you're doing I, I you know uh it is hard to break through the noise sometimes especially in the political climate that we're in but um i i wish you all the best and dear god man give them hell that's all i yeah. can say well i can promise that i'll be always authentic and that's what I can do. I can be real and authentic, right? And at the end of the day, I can cut to the chase and, and hopefully go after the issues that are going to speak to all Albertans. Well, I want to thank Jordan. I want to thank everyone who's tuned in via the website, who tuned in via YouTube to listen. Thank you for all the questions. Um, if you want, remember, all the links to Jordan's information are in the show notes. So scroll down. You'll be able to find it there. If you want to take out a membership, the membership link is there as well. Um, and remember... I say this all the time, but I'm going to continue saying it until I'm six feet under the ground. Um, get out from behind social media for at least five minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. It makes our society better. It makes our democracy better. And it makes us as better as a people. So with that, have yourself an excellent remainder of your Saturday night. And remember, keep talking.